So let's talk about a game. What game though? Picking a game can be hard sometimes. It's surprisingly difficult to get hyped up about, I don't know, Gunstar Heroes. Yeah, it's great. That's obvious, clearly. But the mood's just not there. In the words of George Harrison, it's been done. So if you're in a bit of a rut, as I am, you go to the comfort zone. Sod the classics, I want to talk about something mundane. I want to review World Cup Italia 90. Why this game specifically will become clear. You might already be wondering if there's something special about it, and I'll burst your bubble by straight away saying that no, there isn't. This game is not worthy of a big documentary style video that goes into the making of the whole thing. Originally released in 1989, it's the first football game on the Mega Drive, it's a licensed jobby based on the year's World Cup competition, and it was probably knocked together in a matter of weeks. That's about all there is to say with regards to the game's creation. The only interesting behind the scenes thing is that Sega published the game jointly with Virgin Mastertronic, presumably because they both had the license or got together to get the license for a World Cup game. And that's not very interesting is it? So it's a traditional review, we can move straight on to the game itself. World Cup Italia 90 is… well it's shit, but shit in a very specific way. It's a game that's probably familiar to most everyone who owned a Mega Drive, even if you didn't have the cart itself, which did sell, chances are you probably had it or saw it on the Mega Games 1 cartridge, which loads of people had. The game shared space with Columns and Super Hanon, and the cart was part of MD bundles from around about 1993. If you're American you know said compilation as Triple Score 3-in-1, and you know this game as World Championship Soccer. The game's license only applied to Europe. So how is it shit? It seems obvious really, I mean all you have to do is look. World Cup Italia 90 is the sort of game that at the time could make some people think, this is the 16 bit revolution that everyone's talking about? <laughs> well thanks but I'm gonna stick with my spectrum. It's a top down footy game, a viewpoint familiar to most and I'm guessing inspired by Tekan World Cup and what have you. And it's, well, quite ugly looking. Every player is identical aside from the colour of shirt that they wear, right down to having the same perfectly round haircut. If they ever do a bicycle kick, you will see that they have no face. The goalie is the only exception, and he looks even worse, a true mishmash of shapes. When he's got the ball in his hands, these weird fins stick out of him. I'm not sure if the goalie's either got a really long Deerstalker hat on, or if he's actually been played by Goofy. In short, it's an ugly game. The presentation is haphazard beyond belief, and nothing truly works about it. There's even a classic ugly radar that serves no purpose because like most radars in football games, you will never ever look at it because you have no reason to look at it. The sound effect of a ball being kicked is akin to that of a curry fart. Even the music, a bouncy calypso-esque soundtrack which most people would agree is the best part of the game, is ruined, because every time the ball goes out of play, the music stops and restarts from the beginning. Actually it's worse than that, when the ball goes out of play, the game cuts to a black screen and the music hands in a way that, for a split second, always makes you think that the game's crashed, before restarting. As a consequence of this, if you play the game for any length of time, then this snippet of music will be in your head for the rest of your life. And speaking of ugly, there's the big pictures of goal kicks, corners and, of course, the celebration after a goal. Isn't that just a marvel? If I ever make millions of pounds, then I'm going to get this blown up, framed and stuck on a wall, as a monument to good taste. Still, nothing in World Cup Italia 90 is uglier than the football itself. This is a game where you do nothing but hoof the ball. You hoof the ball endlessly, aiming for it to get into the box, where hopefully your striker's in position to head the ball into the back of the net. That's the secret to victory. You hammer B and get the ball upfield through endless diagonal long balls, and then once you're in and around the box, you hit A for the header. You won't score every time, but you'll score a fair bit, more than enough to win. 
If your strikers haven't developed a major case of CTE by the time the group stages are over, then you're not doing it right. The C button for a ground pass might as well not exist. Roughly around 60% of your goals will probably be scored in this fashion, and no, I didn't pull that number out of my ass. I counted the goals I scored over the course of a tournament and got the percentages for both head and feet. That's how dedicated I am. If you're playing a shit team you may get the odd chance to run at the opposition, but most of the time you're just swarmed by the defence if you try, so get hoofing and heading and you'll win. This is the sort of football that the marketing bod at Nike who coined the phrase Yoga Bonito doesn't want to admit actually exists. It's a simulation of how Greece won the European Championships in 2004. It's a football that us English folk are intimately familiar with, probably because it's what our national team have brought to every major tournament for the past 20 years. It's football that makes our newest international manager, Sam Allardyce, get a white stonker in his pants. So yes, a shit game that looks like shit, presents itself like shit, is shittily ultra sluggish and unresponsive, another reason to hoof the ball, and plays utterly shit football. It's shit. But it is sort of special because it's so utterly familiar. It's even somewhat endearing and hits a certain nostalgia bone. Perhaps it's something that only the odd person will get. Maybe you have to support a team from your country's lower divisions. Or you just have to be bored. World Cup Italia 90 is the sort of game that you play when you can think of virtually nothing else to do. A default choice. The people behind Mega Games 1 knew this utterly. That's why Italia 90 is right there in the middle, the default choice on the menu, with one of its themes playing. You actually have to make an effort if you want to play Columns or Super Hanon. When you play Italia 90 you want something quick, cheap and dirty. And of course you want to win, which you will because the game is so ridiculously easy. Even if you really lean into your boredom and go on to win the tournament, it'll only take a little over an hour. And of course you would never expect anything more at the end than a single screen summing up your results, complete with another awfully low quality picture before being kicked back to the title screen. By which point, hopefully, you thought of something more constructive to do with your day. It's comically mindless, you'll get a giggle from the odd cock up here and there, whether by you or the computer, and chances are pretty good that you'll win. And those cock ups are indeed quite funny, cause hey, even if you're winning most games by 5 goals or more, that doesn't mean you're playing beautiful football. It's ugly football, and the goals are gloriously ugly too. You score thanks to the goalie screwing up, or watching as your limp shot from the area goes in when the keeper just dives at nothing. Your own goalie is manually controlled which provides plenty of opportunities to screw up big time on the rare occasion when the opponent is in your box. My favourite though, and the defining moment for me, is when you have a goal kick, as I do here in my Quera final against West Germany. Suddenly the B button you've been using to hoof the ball all game magically becomes a concede a goal button, where you pass straight to the other team's striker who sticks it straight into your gaping net. Hilarious. I mean it didn't matter, I was already 4-0 up. So to summarise briefly, yes this is a rubbish game, and certainly not one that I would recommend to anybody, unless as previously mentioned you're Sam Allardyce, who's probably already using this game as a tactics tool for the 2018 World Cup. I even put it in my 20 worst Mega Drive games list ages ago, which in retrospect was a bit unfair, there are plenty worse footy games than this on the Mega Drive after all. But it was also unfair because, well can I honestly justify all the hours that I've actually put into the game? It's not like I truly enjoyed it at any point, from 1992 all the way up to now, and yet I always come back to it. Why? Well that's the eternal question. Similar to why do people eat pot noodles, or Rustler's quarter pounders, or Chicago Town deep dish pizzas. I'm sure plenty of us would love to always grind up some quality meat, fry some bacon bits, get some nice pickles, toast the bun and grill a beautiful patty up to medium rare every time. But we don't always want that. And not just because it's expensive or inconvenient or time consuming. In a place you don't want to talk about at parties, you want that Rustler's burger, 
and you eat that microwaved Rustler's burger with the sloppy bun, lukewarm meat disc, desultory burger sauce, and cheese flavoured singlet. And if, while doing that, you were playing World Cup Italia 90 at the same time, well, that would be a thoroughly appropriate choice of game, my friend. Thanks for watching this video on World Cup Italia 90, what an almighty game it is. If you like the video then please do consider liking it, do consider subscribing and certainly do consider following me on my Twitter and Facebook as well as supporting me, if you're really awesome, on Patreon. So our Patreon supporters have a bit of a sin song waiting for them. Jason Leach, Martin Pataki, Taylor Armand, ba -da -ba. Twisted Squoat, Peter Sidon, Grant Butler, Visha, Vishadi, Tiago Puerto does centre, Silver does centre, Silver, Ian Robert Solar Fallbean, Dragon Sex Master Joel Hartman, Phil Taprog, Ben Coker, Jamie Ham, Shirley Norris, Great and Black Yeah, at least try to do something to music. Okay, who else needs to be thanked? Um, Tim Lintz, Robert Kelly, Kenneth Bergen, Alvaro Gonzalez, Riding the Bullet, Jamie Davenport, Johan Eriksson, Stephen Hornsby, Jan Best, Robin Banks, Dan Roscoe, Christian Earnshaw, L. O'Brien, Francisco Pimenta, Kev Gilmore, Matt Lee, Alexander Green, Thomas Daniels, Greg Olson, Mark Johnson, Ken Barraclough, Stuart Ashen, Lee Harris, James Id, Novel, Gerard Morris, Mike Siegler, Mark Brooks, Ed Reader, Russell Hugo, Paolo Leary, Graham Kamak, Scott Mitten, Nicole Ketchum, Ninth Demon, Ludwig Holmstrom, John Izzell, and Kit Leary. Thank you all once again for your support, I love you all. So will Psygnosis be up next? Maybe, just maybe it will be. I'm not sure yet. But whatever is up next I am sure that I shall see you then. So as ever, wherever you are and whoever you be, have a good one, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!